those events can be thought of as DML operations, DDL operations, and uh, system events such as shutdowns and user events like login or logout. Last two are very common. Uh, apart from that, you know the DML operations are like insert. So you are familiar with directions are created. When you do these type of things, automatically the triggers can activate and does the required thing. Sometimes it can be a, a set, uh, security uh, behavior implemented using a trigger. Uh, in some uh, possible ways, uh, some prompting of important messages. There can be many applications. However, uh, depending on the scenario, you have to design that trigger, then only it activates and do the uh, expected useful thing. So whenever Activates and execute a trigger. So we say the trigger is fired because nobody is going to happen automatically. Right? With that, uh, we look into to, to this. Uh, our procedures functions and you may have okay apart from that uh, triggers may share some uh, uh, common character characteristics like also have some features also, they have, uh, the triggers have some significant differences as well as I told you, it operates this type of events. Yeah, the functions and procedures are not. Within the database. In my previous lesson, uh, look into the stored procedures in SQL developer in a graphical using interface and you can manually execute that as well. So in the same way under trigger you can have as I already mentioned several types of triggers, the DMA triggers. Uh, you can also have triggers for DDA applications as well. Then there are some other triggers called instead of triggers uh, when you update views rather than table on views you can create instead of triggers then you can have system triggers as well uh, these are available from Oracle each I onwards uh, that means in uh, a developer you have uh, system, you can implement system triggers as well. Like the database shutdown or startup, you can automatically uh, fire triggers and do the required useful thing. Uh, here are some examples of DMA triggers. You can have uh, statements, signing. Uh, and level uh, it can be uh, statements like delete update or insert statements and you can uh, have the timing before or after it defines whether the trigger fires before or after the statement is executed right For an example, before you insert some values, there may be situation 
before you insert some value it has to be checked for validation and if it is not in the uh, correct format or if it is not the expected value then figure out uh, and try figures the uh, trigger can be for you insert the data into the table to log log files cannot be done in keep the record of a certain activity once it is done now in such a operation you can execute then you can define the label of row. It can be uh, row statement triggers. Uh, likewise, you can define that. Then we use the for each row clause is uh, defined for rows. Then the practical view. This is the it is uh, you can use the create keyword to be keywords or place to change it if, if it is required to change it later on then you can use or replace part okay. now let's say today you uh, created a trigger and it, it works fine but anyway uh, after one or two days you may want to do some changes you may want to fine tune the trigger then you have a trigger already created in the database. Therefore, you cannot create the same trigger again. And that case, it with or in place with the new one. And then it overrides the existing trigger with any other you, you have to specify uh, what type of, of uh, label block is this in procedures we use this as Table this as function now here it's triggered. That part is very common. Then you can uh, specify the uh, before or after the uh, section. So you can uh, define that there. Then uh, on what it should activate insert update or delete table name and for each row like this trigger then you can specify when to activate or the fire that particular trigger now if you uh, look at this click uh, command with other uh, stored procedures as well as uh, uh, functions you can have without uh, or replace the creation right the creation part then you have to uh, implement the body of the trigger create trigger you can have uh, the uh, trigger name if it is required, you can use the all case keyword. When you create a trigger for the first time, 
you may not want to use this or replace it because there are no trigger existing therefore nothing to overwrite okay. nothing to overwrite yeah. uh, you may just use create keyword but then uh, after first time you have to uh, have the or replace part otherwise here uh, saying that uh, trigger is existing uh, be careful on that the other important thing as i told you replace thing you have to be very careful if the trigger was not written by you in actual database environment you should not uh, use create or replace without looking at, at the logic what it has been uh, used otherwise it would give you lot more uh, problems environment right that is a practical thing for an example if you deleted a particular validation in your database would not capture that thing even another person can uh, just log into the system and uh, do the changes right then it will be a very critical thing those, those things are handled by the triggers that features therefore you should never replace an existing one if it is not written by you in fact it's a practical thing right might be doing something of that in uh, keep it safe otherwise there you have no way of uh, reverting back then uh, uh, before and after as i told you uh, it's very straightforward what to do with the event before the event happens or after the event happens then the table name uh, then for each row uh, this specified that the trigger is a row level trigger so when you read uh, each row of the database table it uh, activates row by row it checks keeps uh, monitoring and uh, one for each so insert update or delete happens uh, besides row level uh, triggers we can have statement level triggers a statement level trigger firing uh, once regardless of the number of rows affected by the trigger event right so in uh, row level trigger for each row it activates a fire up so they, let, let's say you have uh, you insert updates or delete then for each action it keeps on monitoring and if it is uh, found something wrong depending on our logic it activates and uh, just but in statement level trigger uh, fires only once regardless of the number of rows affected by the triggering event so if you omit the for each row clause, then create trigger uh, statement will create a statement level trigger, right? That is why I have given you uh, these things in detail. Right? If you omit this part for each row, then it just create a statement level trigger. Uh, it does not care about the 
a number of occurrences. It only fires once and uh, then uh, after it won't uh, fire out. Now let's say you uh, do a bank transaction where you withdraw money from your account. Let's say you had uh, 100,000 rupees in the bank. Now you want to withdraw money. When you withdraw money, always the system should buy. You may withdraw any number of amount you wish, right? Even though you have 100,000 in your bank, you may uh, withdraw uh, even more. over 1 million right. uh, passbook and you can do it in manual it won't fire out uh, to avoid such thing uh, you can have triggers written in the database then for each transaction for each row in the customer uh, database you should keep monitoring right if you did not do so the customer can uh, retrieve 90,000 at the first uh, trigger does not need to fire out then he again quickly withdraw another 100,000 whatever it is because since the uh, first one happened uh, without any problem so even the other one would skip that or if it is only once happening only once uh, therefore uh, you may always have to keep an uh, eye on the each row for different uh, scenarios it depends on the scenario right Therefore, uh, it is very useful to have uh, triggers activated for each row, depending on the situation. Therefore, that is why if it is not needed, we should not use that. Other Otherwise, it would be a performance hit. Then enable or disable uh, is created in the enable or disable state. Uh, if the trigger is disabled, it is not fired when the trigger is Right? There are situations for you. Uh, you may have to. Uh, turn off the triggers otherwise the triggers would find the testing part for an example you may have a table where uh, it has to uh, be beyond beyond the specified limit for a day you may have uh, 1 million in the account band but they are allowing you to withdraw only up to 100,000 for a day using an ATM card or using ATM machines uh, that's a condition so, uh, therefore you may want to uh, first you may uh, try to check that whether it is possible then you have to activate the trigger and uh, check whether the trigger works fine likewise time to time you may want to turn on the triggers and turn off the triggers right uh, likewise, uh, by default you do not specify the uh, clause enable or disable when the trigger is created with uh, uh, with a on a table when you do so. Right? Even though you do not specify that by default, the uh, trigger becomes 
enable. Then uh, uh, follows or proceeds another trigger. Right? For each trigger event, example uh, in DM, DML operations, you can use insert updates or delete you can define multiple triggers to fire in this case you uh, need to specify the firing sequence of follows or proceeds right now let's say uh, you want to uh, fire C condition is met right uh, especially in in banks for security uh, for, uh, reasons in many of the finance circumstances we have to inform all the parties right so likewise we have to follow a uh, procedure so uh, specify the sequence first do this then do this then have to do this likewise so there, there can be uh, writing to log files And uh, uh, just give some program message to the user. It may write some important details to log files. Uh, likewise, you can define many things. So now we look at the trigger uh, with some uh, details. You can have the trigger header. In trigger header, we specify what we discussed here. Okay. You can have that part as the trigger header. There you can specify the follows or proceeds. Another trigger. Then uh, enable or disable thing can also be define in the trigger header. Then uh, we go to the body section. As usual, body section comprises with declare statement that is for declaration. Then begin that is for executions of the statements. And then exception and part and end. That is common to uh, other uh, blocks like uh, procedures and functions with that you can uh, uh, fire. recording stopped now this example here attend this I am going to wind up the class at this point by sharing and let me know in the next class we can uh, discuss that. I have, I am going to give you a complete uh, tutorial for creating a trigger using uh, uh, some SQL scripts as well. Right? So you do that and let me know in the next class. So now I'm going to share this, uh, then you can uh, do it. Uh, in this, uh, in Recording this in progress. example, you may need to modify the uh, table name I have already modified. Uh, you, can, you may need to do some uh, little alterations. Uh, first you try to execute this in your environment. If it gives you some errors, then you can uh, alter this uh, PLSQ code. 
and then you can uh, try to correct it and work. It should work anyway. The, I'm not sure whether the table name is uh, different than the existing table in the available in the database. Only so uh, you have to do the uh, changes. Otherwise, uh, it should work fine. Now we can get this uh, files. I think everybody got the uh, resource files. So we can uh, open C. And let me know if you have any questions there. Now, if you if, if uh, related to this example, you can have this type of insert into statement, right? You do not want to worry about how to call the trigger. As I told you, it automatically fires out. Now, in this case, uh, we are going to do a small uh, insertion to the uh, table uh, where we check a new employee ID is greater than zero. When you insert the salary, then it should monitor that when this particular um, thing happens, then it automatically activates. Anyway, doing the uh, triggers, these are important things uh, related to this example all the new references are not available for table level triggers rather you can use them for record level uh, triggers right? table level or statement level you cannot use uh, all the new reference variable only for trigger uh, raw level trigger you can use and if you want to query the table in the same trigger uh, then you should use the keyword because the trigger can query the table or change it again only after the initial change are applied at the table and the table is uh, back in the consistent state. So therefore, you can use uh, alt table. Otherwise, those values may not persist in the table. It related to this uh, example, uh, that trigger has been written uh, in such a way that it uh, fires before any delete statement uh, happens. By default, you you are uh, triggers activates before. If you need to really uh, declare it to happen after, then you have to uh, use that after keyword. Then uh, you can uh, uh, grant the permission to create triggers. You can use uh, create trigger function. Uh, we will discuss this thing. Uh, later on, once you have done the uh, practical, as I told you. Right. Recording stopped. Uh, do you have any uh, questions up to now?